garden needs to be fed, and so I am going to feed the garden. I have several different things I have going on here. I was just in the kitchen, and I blended down some eggshells, and I added in some spent coffee grounds. So I'm going to be spreading this on the plants um, this evening. Let's see. Let me move you guys so that you can see what I am doing over here. How about that? I'm just gonna take a couple of handfuls of this mixture and I'm just gonna spread it on the soil. I'm just gonna spread it on the soil. It's gonna take time to work its way in. It's not an immediate fertilizer, but it will work its way into the soil over time. I am trying to build healthy soil. Because if you have what I was trying to say before everything toppled over <laughs> is that I'm trying to build healthy soil. And in order for me to do that, I have to make sure that I am fertilizing my plants regularly on a regular schedule. Just like you need to eat, they need to eat. So I'm going to fertilize the garden and then I'll be back to show you me actually using a water-based uh, water fertilizer. And look, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Let me move you up closer. This is a gladiola. And that is a gladiola seed right here. And I am gonna be harvesting that. Looks like I may have one or two more. This really didn't go to seed very well. I think I pulled the flower head out before it was ready um, but I'm gonna harvest that seed and try to get some gladiola seeds but yes I'm going to water these plants as soon as I finish fertilizing so I'll be back I am also using oyster shells in the garden this is an all-natural oyster shell and I'm gonna be just putting a little bit a little bit of this in the soil or on top of the soil as well. I ran out of the eggshells and tea and so I'm going to be adding oyster shells because again I am trying to create healthy soil because farmers don't just throw their soil out after they finish with the crop. They enrich that soil so that they can have even greater harvest, greater crops year after year after year. So I'm trying to take that into consideration and build healthy crops. I also want to make sure that the blueberries get adequate food. And so I'm going to use a special acid mix on the blueberries. I hadn't been using any special fertilizer on the blueberries. I've just been feeding them with what I have. And I have one blueberry, the pink lady, that is doing really well and I have that uh, that purple blueberry which I can't remember the name of it I picked it up from Walmart it doesn't seem to be doing as well so I'm gonna fertilize it now with some special um, blueberry fertilizer and see if that makes a difference and this is what that looks like so I am just gonna take the cap off of here it's just a little twist high Take the twist tie. It looks like the bread twisty that you get off of your bread box or your bread bag. And I'm just gonna put some of this in the blueberry. But I have taken the fish fertilizer, 511. I have taken my goop juice and I have put it in this five gallon bucket. And as you can see, it is drawing flies like crazy. The, fry, the flies really love that 511. It has that special sauce that they really like. It is the most disgusting smell when you mix all this together. But I put it in this five gallon bucket and I am going to be watering in all the granular fertilizer that I have put on the plants today. And I have a lot to water so I'm not gonna show you guys 
me watering everything but I'm just going to take this empty bucket I'm going to pour off some of this into the bucket and I'm just going to water by hand the the uh, drip irrigation is going to come on in the morning so I am not going to water it extensively I'm just going to give it a little bit of drink this evening so that it gets some food and fertilizer and then in the morning uh, early morning it's going to get a really deep drink but I want to show you all something um, let's see if it's still blooming let's I go want over to there. show you guys my crimson passion flower that has bloomed that's the third bloom on this passion flower in the better part of a week sorry about that that's the third bloom uh oh come on come on it's not focusing come on be nice come on I hope you guys can see it there we are that's the third bloom on this plant in the better part of a week and I'm gonna insert a picture so that you guys can see what it really looks like because it is absolutely beautiful absolutely beautiful and I don't want to get too close to it because remember yesterday I showed you guys let's see if I can get a picture of him today he is still sitting pretty I showed you guys that bad mamma jamma there are three of them like that in the garden and I'm just not ready to, to mess with it yet I am gonna have to uh, tear up their their web because that web is on the pot with my let's see let me let me zoom out let's see if I can zoom out come on be nice be nice my camera is not cooperating with me right now but come on here we are there he is but if you can kind of tell if you know what a tomato plant looks like he is he's resting his his uh, web is resting on my tomato plant right there that's a tomato plant I'm gonna go up up and up and up and up and up and there's a tomato there's some flowers on it but it's resting on my tomato plant and in the bottom of that pot there is some and I don't know if you guys can see it you guys can't see it from here I'm, I'm a ways away from it but in the pot with that tomato is some cinnamon basil and I need to harvest that basil soon because I would like to uh, utilize it but yes I am gonna have to disrupt a couple of those webs because they're in my way and I'm hoping that that spider will be kind to me and not jump on me <laughs> and uh, continue to do his job in the garden and not terrorize me but yes it's gonna have to go here okay pretty soon. I have come inside because it has been thundering and lightning pretty bad off and on and I wanted to make sure that I finished off my video for you guys because I care about giving you content and I care about what you say about what I'm putting out there so I wanted to come back if you watched my um, back from hiatus video and I hope the light isn't too bad I'm, I'm working with what I have y'all uh, if you watched my coming back from hiatus video I did tell you guys that I was going to be showing you several hauls because while I was away I've been doing a lot of reading a lot of research and I've purchased a number of things and so I am going to give you a haul while the garden is drying out um, I went to one of one of the favorite places where I buy some seeds I went to that place and I'm going to show you uh, some seeds that I picked up the first one is a dragon tongue bean dragon I hope you guys can see that dragon tongue bean I've never grown this one but it looked really interesting in the uh, seed catalog so I want to give this one a try I also picked up some it's called white stars but it is a fever few it is an herb can you guys see that so I will be um, growing this in the garden you know I have a an extensive herbal medicinal garden a lot of the plants that I grow are for medicinal purposes so that's one of the herbs I picked up for that purpose um, this is a Castel Franco. This is a Radicchio. Now, I'm, I don't think I really care much for a Radicchio, but I wanted to give this one a try to see if I can say for sure, yeah, I really don't like it. So I did pick up a Radicchio to give this one a try. And I will be putting this one in the garden uh, probably in the next couple of days because it's a good time to throw out your 
your um, lettuces for the fall. So I'm gonna put that in my stack of stuff to, to uh, plant out for the fall. I did pick up many things for next year. You know that seeds are at a premium, so if you can find something that is now back uh, in the, the seed catalogs sale rack, you should snap it up. This one is an artichoke. It's the Valet de Provence. And so I picked up an artichoke. I really enjoy artichoke. I've never uh, have grown it or cooked it. So this will be an experience for me. And I know it has absolutely beautiful flowers. So I, I'm interested in giving artichoke a try. But again, this is going to be for next year. Sounds like baby girl is awake. I can hear her feet clickety clacking on the floor. Um, I also picked up a uh, bitter melon. This is the Abashi bitter melon. Excuse you, Burpee. That was her, y'all. That was not me. I hope y'all didn't hear that. That was so rude. Um, I lived in Japan for five years, and bitter melon is part of the staple. Matter of fact, I lived on Okinawa, and uh, bitter melon is one of the staple. I think it's a gourd that they eat and so I, I wanted to try to grow this as a matter of fact let me read you the back of the, the packet it says a traditional variety from Okinawa Japan a deep green skin color mild bitter taste and I happen to see this growing on another youtubers channel uh, I don't think it was this one that she had but she had a similar variety to this one and so I wanted to add this to to my garden because she made it seem like it was so interesting and a really good flavor. Um, and it is called Doc. The, the, the Doc or Bloody Doc. It is a perennial. And so I wanted to put this in my garden because it says it has like a, a lemony taste. And that it's deer resistant. I don't have deer. But uh, maybe in the future when I move to my homestead there might be the possibility of deer. But it looks absolutely beautiful. And I wanted to give it a try. And I, I just love the fact that it has that, that burgundy, purpley, green, variegated um, foliage. I think I might have let a mosquito in when I came inside, you guys. So if you saw me swatting, that's what that was. I, I don't know if you all heard in my previous video, I ended up putting a, um, a bug zapper uh, right behind you in in the uh, living room because when I when the dog and I go in and out There's always a possibility of insects coming in and I don't like that. So I have a bug zapper so if you all have issues with um, Insects coming into the house because you're going in and out of the garden as well uh, You have potted plants. I, I keep looking over there because I've got potted plants inside the house and sometimes you get um, dirt gnats um, bug zapper back to seeds I also picked up a variegated plantain I've never grown this before but I wanted to give this a try as well I saw this in the very same youtuber video um, I'm trying to think of her video YouTube channel I'm, I'm new I'm a new subscriber to hers I've been binge watching her videos and she's got some a, a really beautiful garden in uh, the Georgia area absolutely gorgeous garden um, but I loved the, the, greenery, the greenery on this one. It has dark as well as light leaves. And this one is also uh, um, has medicinal benefits. So again, I'm trying to increase the plants that I'm growing in my garden that have medicinal benefits. Not only for myself, family, but also for friends. And because I do know how um, beneficial dandelion roots are, I actually have some dandelion um, you've seen it growing in my garden, but I've collected dandelion from a, a previous location where I lived because there was no um, pesticides put on, on the ground ever. And so I did collect seeds from that yellow dandelion, but I picked up a Japanese white dandelion. And so um, this is also, it's a perennial. It's native to Southern Japan and it's held in high esteem. And you all know that I am working on a white garden. And so the majority of the flowers near my living room window are all white. They're all primarily white. And so I want to uh, pot this up and put that at the base of some of those plants that grow pretty big. I want to have white Japanese dandelion. So, yeah. Um, and it's considered... 
it's not considered an aggressive or a weedy plant so that's one of the things I picked up and I also thought that it was just absolutely beautiful uh, it says here that the um, the delicately bitter leaves are lightly boiled so you can you can eat the leaves as well on these as uh, the roots you can stir fry the roots on these so give this one a try I talk about dandelion root and the benefits of that in many of my videos and if you have not seen those take a look uh, look it up for yourself I don't like to tell you uh, why I use things or why I give things to friends or family I give you a link so that you can do the research for yourself and you can determine whether or not it's best for you and your health and your family because I don't want to be the deciding factor because if something doesn't work for you um, I, I would hate for you to say oh I you know uh, Clawson World said to try that and it doesn't work for me because that that my mom says it a lot uh, my mom is in the same position a lot of stuff that works for me or, or my sibs um, may not work um, for her and she goes well you know how different I am certain things don't work for me that work for you guys uh, so yeah try it for yourself and then I also picked up some mulin I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly this is a biannual um, I thought this was absolutely hilarious when I began to look this up this is actually considered um, a Texas toilet paper, Texas cowboy or cowboy toilet paper. Uh, the leaves are very soft and if you happen to run out of toilet paper, you can use this leaf. Or if you like to go camping, I know I'm actually going to be going to a live YouTube video in not too long from now and the uh, lady that, that I don't live that far from um, loves to go camping. She just came back from a couple of camping trips and if you watch her YouTube video, you know, who, or her YouTube channel, you know who I'm talking about. And if they ever run out of toilet paper, if she's got this growing in her yard, they can use this, these leaves as toilet paper. I thought that was so hilarious when I read that. And I even shared that with another YouTube video, YouTuber who was wondering what plant they had growing in their yard. And when I saw it, I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what that is. And so he got a kick out of that too. This is, this is considered um, cowboy toilet paper. All right. And then of course, because uh, this company is just so amazing, um, they like to share with every customer. If you've never ordered from Baker Creek, um, give them a try their seeds and I, I, I'm not sponsored by them but I've been very 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 pleased with the seeds that I have bought from them and I don't buy seeds just from them but I'm very pleased with their customer service every time I call when I have an issue they have uh, helped me out with no problems um, they're really good they're very good on uh, returns refunds credits all of that but Baker Creek always, always, always sends you a gift every time you order. Not only is their shipping free, you get free shipping on everything you order. You always get a free pack of seeds. And most of the time, you get something that you've never ordered from them before. Excuse me. Only one time did I get a duplicate of something that I had gotten from them free before. Either way, it was a blessing because I really liked that they had given it to me twice. But this one, I've never tried before. And you all know that I, if you've watched my previous videos, I make pesto. And so lemon basil, I have never grown. I have a lot of Italian basil growing in the garden right now. I've got it growing in about four or five different areas. I also have some cinnamon basil, which they also sent me for free. I have that growing in the garden. I'm going to be harvesting that here pretty soon uh, once I, you know, get around that big old spider. Uh, and then I'm going to also try to grow lemon basil. I'm going to give this a, a look-see. This one grows in about, let's see, it doesn't say how many days, but it's probably the same thing as your, your regular sprouting basil or regular, regular basil. This one sprouts in about six to ten days. It prefers a temperature of 65 to 95 uh, Fahrenheit. Um, like, like all your other basils, it's not frost hardy. So I may have enough time to put some of these seeds out there to give this a try to see what this tastes like. And I may do that. So I think I'm going to slip this in my, my pack of seed area 
where I'm going to be planning here pretty soon. Baby girl is staring at me like, Mom, I'm going to need you to get off because I want to go outside. Okay. Um, now, here are some more seeds. I was watching another YouTuber's video, and he was showing his Monday haul. And I happened to catch this company. This is a home-based business. And I'm very pleased. This is my first time ordering from this company, and I'm very pleased with their process. Uh, not only did I get the order that I purchased, but I got free seed from them as well and a lot of information on the products that I purchased. Now, this one is a white sage. You all know from previous videos, if you've watched my previous videos, that um, my sister and I do smudge white sage. And I've been looking for white sage for quite some time. And so I'm so glad to be able to get my hands on some white sage. I bought some for myself as well as uh, my sister. And I most definitely will be planting this in the garden this week. And it comes with all kinds of wonderful detailed information. Now I know you guys cannot see any of this, but if you are interested, I am going to put her information in the description box below. I'm hoping it's a her because it says Miss Tizzy. So if it's not, I do apologize. I'm not sponsored by this, this company, but I was very, very pleased with what I got from them and all the detailed information they sent. Now, um, I'm not sure how many seeds came in the packet, but this is how the seed packet comes. So I will be giving this a, um, a try probably tomorrow, and I will show you guys me planting this up as well. So this is going to go in my packet of what I'm going to be putting out in the garden in the next couple of days. And I also bought some clary sage. If you're not familiar with the benefits of clary sage, uh, I'm going to put a link down below and I'd like for you to take a chance or, or take the opportunity to read up on it. Clary sage um, is also a, a, a wonderful sage to have in your medicinal garden. And again, she gives you so much detailed information on the products that she sends. And of course, this is the packet of seeds that she sent. So I will be planting this again tomorrow and I got 50 seeds in this one I did happen to see it while I was talking to you guys I got 50 seeds in this one and 25 seeds in this one and so uh, both of these will be going into the garden this week now there's seeds I'm going to be planting and I'm going to show you guys what those are but I was doing a shopping trip a couple of days ago and my desire when I get my homestead is to not have a bunch of shrubs or um, I, I want a living fence if that makes sense and I want living paths and so I plan on growing a lot of lavender to be able to have nice pathways uh, I normally see a lot of box a lot of box growing like box balls spiral spiral uh, boxes box plants cut in many different shapes I want to substitute lavender for that so i picked up another packet of lavender i'm not a huge fan of these the coated seeds they kind of weird me out a little bit because i don't know what that is that coating uh, but i'm gonna try to uh, grow a lot more lavender you guys know i have lavender in the garden but i'm always on the hunt for some more lavender and this is true lavender and i have one packet of this already you know the squirrels tore up my Provence lavender. I had planted that and they just decimated that pot. So this is going out in the garden this week. And I did pick up more sage. This is the broadleaf sage. This is what I cook with. Uh, still have not been able to get this in the garden this year. I think I have some growing in the indoor greenhouse. The indoor greenhouse is right here. You guys can't see it. But um, I did plant some in the indoor greenhouse, and it looks like I have some growing in there. So uh, it's not ready to be planted out yet, but we'll see if that, if that lives long enough to get outside. Um, and then, of course, rosemary. I was finally able to put my hand on a packet of rosemary. I should have gotten two packets, but that's okay. Um, this has, it doesn't say, oh, 100 seeds. So I should be fine. I should be able to get uh, enough rosemary out of here. And yet, it was a, the So Easy seeds again, so it's got that green coating. So I'm hoping it'll be okay. It says natural seed, but again, mm, I'm just 
not feeling 100% about seeds that are coated, but I, I, I get it. They're, they do it for many different reasons. Uh, so we'll see. So I'm going to be planting some rosemary in the garden. I got a rosemary plant from a neighbor who was moving, but for some reason uh, it was overwintered and it was in a pot. And when I got it, it didn't look so good and I was not able to get it to bounce back. And so it did, it did die. Um, yeah, it died. It was a horrible death. But I'm going to try to repot up uh, and plant some rosemary. And I've got one or two more things here. And then I'm going to get get going because I have a lot to get to, y'all. But I am not going to cut y'all short because you all are important to me. Now, I don't like this product. I've tried it when I was a young kid. I tried it when I was a... a, a uh, a teenager like maybe 19 years old but I know the importance of this product I know medicinally it's good for inflammation in the body so I'm gonna give this a try okra I was watching another youtuber uh, a couple of days ago y'all are very familiar with her and her husband I'm not gonna say her name um, but you're very familiar and, and they're growing okra in their garden and um, she was talking about how okra is good for you, and I know it, but I just, I don't like soft fruit or slimy food. I just, I, I, I cannot tolerate it. So, But I'm going to give this a try. I found this packet in the store, this red uh, burgundy okra. I thought the color was beautiful, so I'm going to give it a try. Um, this particular okra... It says that it um, the plants will emerge within 14 to 21 days. It needs about 60 to 70 days of harvest, and it takes full sun. So, yeah, I'm going to give it a try. So this is going to go into the garden this week. And last but not least, I, am, I said I wasn't going to do it, but I changed my mind because I, we still have a little bit more time here and I'm going to see if I can get my gherkin to grow. Um, this gherkin, of course, is not frost hardy. The ideal temperature is between 70 and 90. Uh, we've had a few less 100 degree days, but August is coming and we're going to have 100 degree days for a while in August. We have had some recently it's been pretty brutal it's coming back and it will be pretty feverish but i'm gonna see if i can get this sour gherkin to grow and produce some gherkin for me um i like cucumbers and so i want to see if i can get this little bitty miniature watermelon looking cucumber to grow so we shall see i i put it straight in the garden and it got covered up with the squash plants that you guys see growing on the back fence and I think that because it didn't get enough light um, it didn't it just didn't do well and I couldn't see it and I was not sticking my hands and all that that mass of food growing on that that fence right there because you know we got snakes down here so I don't know if it survived if it's under there I don't I haven't seen it so I'm gonna try again we shall see. So I'm going to put this in a big old pot and see if I can get this to grow. So, all right, that is what I'm going to be putting in the garden this week, as well as some seeds that I purchased. So I got a mini haul. And I will wrap this up with one last segment in the garden. So here we go. Okay. I zoomed out pretty quick, I'm sorry. Behind that corn, if you know what corn is, that's corn. Behind that corn, you will see red vines. See all those red vines? That is my Malabar spinach. And I'm gonna continue to go around. Go around, go around, go around, so you guys can see it. This is my Malabar spinach plant in that pot. That's the pot down there, right next to the corn. And the Malabar spinach is all the way up and it's going all the way into the corn and it's hanging all the way out into the walkway. I accidentally broke a piece of it because it had attached itself 
to this tomato tree, I call it. It, to, it attached itself to this tomato, that uh, cane right there, and I wasn't aware that it was on the cane and I was about to move this tomato because this tomato needed to be moved because I had to treat it. And when I moved it, I snapped the Malabar spinach. But I have been harvesting off of this Malabar spinach for a, a better part of a couple of weeks. And so far, it's my first time having Malabar spinach. I'm not a, a huge fan of it, but I'm sauteing it and adding it with other things and it's actually tasting pretty good. You know, the, the berries that it creates, you can use these berries uh, to dye fabrics, to uh, dye Easter eggs. There's a, a couple of different uh, things that you can do with these berries. And as you can see, if I move the camera up, it has more flowers and it will have more berries. But this is my heat-loving Malabar spinach that's growing behind the sweet corn. I'm sorry, I, I hit the, the uh, camera. The sweet corn is in this pot. It's struggling a little bit, but it's, it's still hanging on to the best of its ability. I'm getting ready to feed it right now. I do believe there is a ear of corn in there somewhere. I did see it earlier. I don't want to mess with it too much. Uh-oh. I'm getting hung up, guys. I'm getting hung up. There's too much going on in my garden. Let's see. I did see an ear of corn. Yeah, here we go. Let's see if I can move you guys down a little bit. In there, perhaps. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. Can you guys see the silks right there? Boop, boop, boop. Behind that flower. Those are corn silks. So I won't get a lot of corn off of this. This is my first time trying to grow this. Uh, this is peaches and cream corn. The next time I try it, I will put it in the ground. It was just an experiment. You all know about me and my God experiments. I just try to see if it's gonna work. The cucumbers uh, are doing all right. Uh, it is struggling a little bit because it is warm and it's in a pot and I have to water it more. It's gonna get a feed today, but as you can see, I'm gonna zoom in, I'm not gonna touch it. You can see it has cucumbers. It's growing cucumbers. Can you see those little cucumber right there? It has a few little cucumbers on it. This is a pickling cucumber. So that's it for me today, everybody. Let me get on this watering because I need to feed these plants. They are very hungry. So until the next video, bye everybody. Okay. I zoomed out pretty quick, I'm sorry. Behind that corn, if you know what corn is, that's corn. Behind that corn, you will see red vines. See all those red vines? That is my Malabar spinach. And I'm gonna continue to go around. Go around, go around, go around so you guys can see it. This is my Malabar spinach plant in that pot. That's the pot down there, right next to the corn. And the Malabar spinach is all the way up and it's going all the way into the corn and it's hanging all the way out into the walkway. I accidentally broke a piece of it because it had attached itself to this tomato tree, I call it. It, to, it attached itself to this tomato, that uh, cane right there, and I wasn't aware that it was on the cane and I was about to move this tomato because this tomato needed to be moved because I had to treat it. And when I moved it, I snapped the Malabar spinach. But I have been harvesting off of this Malabar spinach for a, a better part of a couple of weeks. And so far, it's my first time having Malabar spinach. I'm not a, a huge fan of it, but I'm sauteing it and adding it with other things. And it's actually tasting pretty good. You know, the, the berries that it creates, you can use these berries uh, to dye fabrics, to uh, dye Easter eggs. There's a, a couple of different uh, things that you can do with these berries. And as you can see, if I move the camera up, it has more flowers and it will have more berries. But this is my heat-loving Malabar spinach that's growing behind the sweet corn. I'm sorry, I, I hit the, the uh, camera. The sweet corn is in this pot. It's struggling a little bit, but it's, it's still hanging on to the best of its ability. I'm getting ready to feed it right now. I do believe there is a ear of corn in there somewhere. I did see it earlier. I don't want to mess with it too much. Uh-oh. I'm getting hung up, guys. I'm getting hung up. There's too much going on in my garden. Let's see. I did see an ear of corn. Yeah, here we go. Let's see if I can move you guys down a little bit. 
in there perhaps 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 can you guys see the silks right there boop, boop, boop. behind that flower those are corn silks so I won't get a lot of corn off of this this is my first time trying to grow this uh, this is peaches and cream corn the next time I try it I will put it in the ground it was just an experiment you all know about me and my God experiments I just try to see if it's gonna work the cucumbers uh, are doing all right uh, it is struggling a little bit because it is warm and it's in a pot and I have to water it more it's gonna get a feed today but as you can see I'm gonna zoom in I'm not gonna touch it you can see it has cucumbers it's growing cucumbers can you see those little cucumber right there it has a few little cucumbers on it this is a pickling cucumber so that's it for me today everybody let me get on this watering because I need to feed these plants they are very hungry so until the next video Bye, everybody. This is that beautiful crimson passion flower. Isn't it magnificent?